Tonight's video is going to be a recap of last week's classes, Tuesday and Thursday, where we looked at the false edge to false edge and the true edge to true edge, or as I prefer to say, the outside to outside and the inside to inside crossings. Not necessarily the half sword, but our swords are crossed. Um, because depending on where we find ourselves, uh, we'll have a few options. So I'm going to go with the false edge to false edge first, or sorry, the outside to outside first. Because that's how he presents it, but <clears throat> let's start from here. So these could be either right foot or left foot. Um, I think it's a little easier to show it, uh, maybe coming from a punta reverso, or it could be me defending here, and I've ended up bound with you with the swords crossed. How do we get there? So it could be this false defense, or it could be I've done a punta reverso. Uh, so for now, let's just say Punta Reverso. So we've done, done this, we are crossed, I come around, cut to the head, get out. And notice that here, I am leaving distance, I'm not staying in, unlike the provocation. So that's our first one, and that's kind of the pattern that we want to be getting our partner to is that I come here, transition to head guard, I come around. Now the very next one is going to be a feint. So I've done this a couple times, done this a couple times, and then when I get them going, I turn them into a rida so to the head, and then we leave ristra So we Come in, give them a look, change into a verso, leave them on the retail. Our third one is going to be a imbrocata. So very similar, so I come here, I feel like I'm in a great place, I'll just turn them into a thrust instead. So come here. We're going to do this. We feel that we're in a good position in terms of play positioning, so we just turn that right into a imbrocata. Number four is I find myself uh, very much on top of their sword at this point. So we've crossed, and I'm nice and on top, so I'm actually going to drive my point down and then leave the reversal. So drive it down. Leave with a squatting bow. Drive down and leave. So you notice here that I'm doing a lot of triangle steps, uh, meaning that my left foot is helping me step back with my right foot uh, quite a bit. That's pretty key in all of these actions, is that there's an implicit triangle step. Five is our Kind of like a feint, but it's our. So as I'm doing this, and they start bringing their hand across, that's when we reach in, trap. Very similar to what we're doing with the um, variation guard, variation of attacks, and then hit, hit, hit. What do we need to do? So we've done this. We start this motion, and then as the hand comes up, trap, hit to the head, hit to the leg. Stab, whatever makes sense. And then finally, our last one here is uh, two possibilities. So we're here, and they're weak enough that I can actually beat their sword, cut, and cut. So I'm going to clear their sword, cut to the face, cut to the head. This is very tight. This is not a big. It's ba ba ba. Now, even tighter than that is at this first part, is as you clear it, you turn that into a thrust right away. So here, clear, turn it in. Clear, turn the hand. So that's our outside to outside. 
Now with the inside to inside, these are all very specific to right foot forward, palm facing up. So we're, in this case we are true edge to true edge. Uh, that's the only way you can't do, you can't do this with the false edge, it doesn't work. So we see a similar pattern here, except for the oar is a little bit different. Uh, so this can come from another, a number of ways. Maybe we're kind of playing around here in Iron Gate, but usually I start this from I've attacked and I've abandoned. So my left foot is free and so is my partner's. So if we are crossed very far towards the tip, this gives me enough time and space to step to the right and throw it, throw it somewhere. So those of you know Fiore, this is identical to the first play of Giocolardo. So I can't wait. As soon as we cross, I'm already going to the next thing via this reverse head guard. And that's our um, reference hand position here. Because I want them to see me going through this position a lot. Until I don't. So the second one is we come here, and now we're going to throw what he introduces later as the falso, impu falso impuntato, meaning it's kind of snapping false edge fanatic that can turn into an brocato. So attacked, abandoned, snap that over, and this is the one time he's gonna have us actually cut the chest and then cut the head. So we're starting our attack. Snap that over, drive the fence, cut, and cut. Snap, cut to the chest, cover, cut to the head from behind. Three is our feint on this side. So I'm gonna give the look of going this way. I'm gonna turn around and come back to the inside. So we're here, without moving forward, Snap around, cut to the head, leave with a dorito stanzo. So we have start the attack, abandon, give the look, change around, cut, and step back. Do that again, cut the ceiling. Four is going to be our further down the sword than number one, meaning that we're now across roughly the middle of the swords. So over here, I can't just go around. So to do this, I'm going to actually use my hilt to clear the sword to the high inside towards their shoulder. Then I throw the reverse external on there. So very similar start, except now I'm using this to knock the sword to the high inside. And then number five is even closer than that, so I'm actually gonna use my pommel to hook their wrist. So here, we have a couple options. This is one of the few places it actually shows you grappling. So here, I hook, drive this towards my hip, so I'll splay them out, and this could be a cut to the right side of the neck. This could turn into the third plane of grappling. This could be, I seize the arm. Stab him below. It's a very kind of Spanish, actually. So you have a number of options here. So see from a different angle. Go nice and close. Hook that palm around to my shoulder. Cut to the neck. Throw. Seize the arm. Stab to the side whatever you need to do. And finally six is our very last one, which is going to be in later terms, this will be a subjugation. And I'm going to use my hand in palm facing inwards and drive it forward, not down. Their sword will go down as a result, but I'm not doing this, I'm doing this. 
So I make my make this as soon as I feel contact. I drive this forward. What's there? Down. Cut to the front. Step around. So I'll do all 12 of these in sequence, then I'll call it a day there, and the next video will be the responses. So outside to outside. Number one is simple fondo going around. Number two is our faint cut to the head, cut to leave. Three is our in Bocanto. Four is we drive the sword down and leave. Five is our faint reach in, cut to leg, cut to head. And six is clear cut, cut or clear thrust. Get out of the way. Uh, I've shown these all with the left foot forward. He says they can be done either foot forward. Does not matter. Just the order of the feet can be a little bit different. So the left foot is forward, it's right to left. What's right to forward? It's the right. But still the left. And then other side, inside inside, throw it onto the head from the reverse side. Two, punte in fall, so cut to the chest, cut around. Three is our feint. Keep the look up from here, snap this cut around, cut to the head, leave the previous tarazzone. Four is clear with the hilt, cut to the head. Five is hook with the pommel, bring it towards your right hip, throw, seize, cut. And six is the subjugation, driving the sword forward. Slashing the throat, stepping around. And those are our 12 crossings, um, six from each side, with only one of them having a variation. So, next video will be all of the responses to these, because as we're seeing that when we're crossed, that moment, that moment we're crossed, whoever has the initiative, whoever uh, is ready to go, can do the agent's part. So, we always want to be able to do. The patient's part as well because um, this is a very very brief moment in time so next week we'll uh, pick up with that